Hi, welcome to Simple Believer TV. My name is Justin, and I want to encourage you today to look at a passage, Luke chapter 8, uh, verses 11 through 15. It's about the parable of the sower, um, and it helps us to understand very specifically the role of the enemy in how he comes at us and how he attacks us and the reason why he does uh, attack us. It's not for us that he's attacking us. He's attacking the word of God. And so this parable is about the sower who sows the word of God. And there's these four different soils, soils that he begins to explain to us, but I want to look at the first three for just a moment because they will help us or give us insight onto how the enemy comes. And I want you to think about this. Every time you go Sunday service and you hear the word of God or you watch a message on YouTube or you hear God speak a word over your life, think about uh, the role of the enemy, what he's intending to do. There's three things that stand out to me. The first soil that we see is the wayside that the word of God was sown and it says immediately after they heard it, then the enemy, Satan, came immediately to steal the word of God. He wanted to steal the very thing before they could believe it and thus it results in salvation. So the enemy's first strategy is to always steal the word that has been sown into your hearts. This is why it's important to, like Solomon said, above all else, guard your heart because out of your heart will flow the issues of life. Uh, the second one is on this stony ground where the word was sown. They, were, they received it with great joy. I've met a lot of people like that where they begin to receive who they are in Christ and who God is for them with great amount of joy. But because it wasn't able to take full root, the enemy came to test the word of God. And that testing led to a place where they no longer endured. So the enemy not only comes to steal the word, but he also comes, if he can't steal it, he's going to come and test it to see whether or not you and I believe what God said. A great example is, I love to share this with people, is I believe that God is always good, he always has your best in mind, and he's always setting you and I up to succeed. And so once I believe that and receive it, the enemy's going to come and first try to steal it. If he can't steal it, he's going to come and test me on it. And so I'm going to have circumstances and storms and challenges of life come and go, will you still believe that God is always good even though your daughter got sick, that your, your, um, your family is breaking down or your finances are tight? Will you still believe it? And many of us relinquish because of the pressure and we let go of the seed that was sown in our heart. So Satan comes to first steal the word and the second one he's going to come and test it. And remember, this is nothing about you. He's coming after the word. It has nothing to do about you and I. And the third soil is this thorny soil where the word was sown, it was received, but because of three things, the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire or pleasures of things of this world, they choke the word of God. So somehow, some way, the enemy was able to get in there and, and give us cares. And this is why it's so important to cast your care upon God every day. That this care may seem so justifiable why you're allowed to have worry about this or care about tomorrow. Or how is this going to work out? When is this going to happen for me? Or why didn't this take place? And God says, cast your care upon me for I care for you. And so as we cast that care and just say, Father, I receive your rest and I receive your peace. The Prince of Peace lives on the inside of me. That peace now rises up and that care begins to no longer put pressure on our shoulders. Then there's the deceitfulness of riches where we get deceived about the stability and the uh, security of money. And we start to see money as our answer. If I just had more money, if I just was blessed here, if I just had this promotion, then I'd have more of this. And we start to get our mind and our heart fixated on pursuing money rather than pursuing God. And the last one, which is a great one, is the pleasure, the desire for other things. That God wants us to enjoy this life and, and take pleasure in the things that he has blessed us with, but not allow those things to take place in our heart that only God should. And so we start to get our time and our attention and our engagement to something that was never God intended. It was meant to be a part of our life, but not to be the pursuit of our life. And so Satan comes to steal the word, and then he comes to test the word to see if you'll hold on. And then he comes to choke the word of God that it would produce no fruit inside of our life. But there's a soil that I believe is true for you and I believe it's true for me that we receive the word with gladness and then we keep it. We hold fast to it. We don't allow this, the, the test of life to push us around. We don't allow Satan to steal it and we don't allow the cares of this life and the money and the desire for other things to come in and choke it. And we hold fast to that word saying, Father, you are always good. 
you always have my best in mind and you're always setting me up to succeed in you. And so we believe that, we hold fast to it and it says that with patience or with endurance, then we start to produce fruit. So hold fast to the very things that you know are true in the word of God. Don't let Satan steal it. Don't let him test you and, or test the word and you let go because you just don't know if you can hold on anymore. No, believe the word of God and don't let the cares of this life, the riches and the desire for other things choke it. Hold fast to the word of God and you will see fruit that is born from your life for the glory of God. Take, take a moment and look at Luke chapter 8 verses 11 through 15 and read it for yourself. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Bye-bye.